Hi there, Ford owners. Today in your 2020 Ford F-250 Super Duty, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Bargman's in-bed seven-way trailer connector. And this is what our in-bed seven-way connector looks like when it's installed. The cover here labels all of our circuits, which is great for diagnostics and testing, especially if you're trying to use your truck to determine if you got an issue with your truck or your trailer, you can check each of these circuits and know what's going on. The cover here is gonna be spring loaded to keep out any dirt, debris, and moisture, and there's seals on the inside. When we lift up the cover, we can see our round seven-way connector in there. That's gonna give us all of our lighting signals, as well as an auxiliary circuit to power up accessories like a tongue jack or maybe to charge the battery on your trailer. It also has outputs for your brake controller if you have a brake controller installed, and backup lights as well. And moving your connector inside your truck bed is almost a necessity if you have a fifth wheel or a gooseneck because those trailers, your connectors are typically here in the front and they're often too short on your trailer to hang down over the back of your tailgate. So this way we can just run it right over here and plug in to get that trailer's lights and brakes and everything functional. What's cool about this kit is that it is specifically designed for vehicles with aluminum truck beds. So you'll get the proper hardware to ensure we don't cause any corrosion and it will allow us to just plug this in line with our factory connector so the installation is quick and easy and our factory connector still has full operation so if you have a bumper a bumper pull trailer as well you can still plug it into that one there at the back to use that trailer we'll begin our installation by first determining where we want to place our connector and i found that this is a great spot right here on the driver's side that way it's enough space for our components to fit in between the interior wall of our bed here and the outer wall of our rear fender there. Uh, some area like this where you see it's recessed, it may be too shallow for this to fit in. So this is gonna be a good spot for it. This is also a nice smooth flat surface. We don't wanna have any ribs and things like that. So make sure you've got enough width for this to go on as well. To get it installed, we're gonna to need to drill a pretty big hole into the material here so that way all these components can pass through and the back of our connector can sit flush up against it. In the instructions it uh, requests that you use a two inch hole saw, but I found that it's considerably easier to do this installation if you use a slightly bigger hole saw. So we're gonna use a two and one eighth inch. That's gonna give us a little bit more room to be able to get our wiring and everything fed down, but it's not gonna be excessively large to where you're gonna see any gaps around the outside. It'll be such a minor difference that the outer perimeter of our connector here is gonna cover all of that up. Now it's always a good idea to check underneath before you start drilling to make sure there's nothing there. I've already gone down below and I just kind of stuck my arm up between the two panels there and just made sure there was no electrical wiring or anything that was gonna be in this location. So now we can choose kind of the height we want. This seems like a pretty good height right about here. So we're just gonna get it in place. I'm going a little bit further forward than I normally do, uh, but there's some tie down hooks here in the back that the customer has. So we're trying to kind of avoid that and keep it to where when he uses them, it's gonna stay out of the way. And I'm not pushing very hard when I'm doing this because once this goes through our fenders on the other side and we don't want to poke our drill bit or anything into that and make a dimple mark on the outside. Now we'll just vacuum up this mess. and protect our bare metal there from the elements with a little bit of clear coat. Now we can get up, pass our components through there. And it is gonna be a little tricky. You are gonna have to kind of do them one at a time to get them to pass through. This is why we kind of chose to go with that two and an eighth inch drill bit, just because the extra clearance isn't I guess necessary 100%, but boy, it sure makes it a, a lot easier to get that to pass through with that little bit of extra diameter. We'll then just keep dropping this down. And then we did talk about uh, earlier about how the distance between the two panels, you may or may not uh, 
contacted if you go with a thinner area there. There is a little spacer that comes in your kit. And that's this guy here. So if you do have a spot where it maybe touches that outer panel there, this will slide in behind it and space it out. So we're just gonna test and see if we even need it here. So yeah, we're gonna be fine without it. We're not, we don't have any pressure against uh, the outer fender or anything like that. There's still a gap there. So we don't need it in this location, but it's there just in case you do, if you do choose to put this in a different spot. Next, we're gonna secure it to the truck bed using the provided self-tapping screws. You do get two packs in this particular kit because it's four aluminum beds. So Bargman just ships the regular screws with it no matter what, you'll find these in the package there. And then you'll also find another package with the aluminum screws. So you should be able to tell the difference kind of by looking at them, the aluminum's a bit like brighter in color. Uh, but if you're unsure, one of the ways you can test it is grab yourself a magnet, aluminum, non-magnetic, and those ones are. So we'll set those aside and use our aluminum ones. So now we're just gonna get it roughly level. It doesn't need to be 100% straight just yet because we can get one screw in and then tweak it and we need, need to make sure it's level for that second screw. We'll now secure these. We're gonna use a 5 16 socket. We're gonna slide that in. Now when I'm putting these screws in here, I highly recommend a quarter inch drive socket because that's gonna have a smaller outer body on your socket and it'll let it clear easier around the, the uh, cover here for our connector. And I don't like to tighten it all the way down just yet because we're going to now use it to hold this in place so we're leveling it just making sure it looks nice and even all the way across and then we'll snug it up there that'll help hold it in place and then if we need to do any minor tweaks to adjust it looks like we need to maybe go just a little bit this way And now that we've got all our screws run down, you can just make sure that it's in the position you want it to be in. It should all be good there. Uh, at this point, we're gonna head down below and grab our wires that we passed down and get those connected. So our wiring comes down here. We just run it across. I'll probably end up zip tying it to the factory wiring there. And then we run it up over across uh, on top of our frame here till it comes out the other side. And then our factory connector is located right here. We'll disconnect our factory connector by pressing in on the release tab. That's that little tab right there. Now that we've got this disconnected, we can plug it into our new one. Before we plug them together, we are going to take some dielectric grease and smear it around in there to help seal it up, protect it against uh, corrosion, keep moisture out of there. If you need some, you can get some here at e-trailer. So once we've got it coated up in there, We'll take the longer end here, that's gonna plug on into this end. And then we'll grease up the other end here and the other end we'll just plug back into our factory connector. I do recommend you really get those a good push to make sure they're clicked in place. I always like to just give it a tug to make sure it's not gonna disconnect. That seems good. So now we'll just load this one up. And then we're gonna take it back up in there. Twist it until the disconnect, which is this little tab there, is on the same side as you had pressed in to release the factory one that was in here previously. So let's get those lined up and then click these into place. And then give that a good tug, make sure it won't pop off of there. At this point now we can just zip tie up our loose wiring so I wanted to take the first one here that was down and tie it to this factory harness here. That'll kind of give a little bit of cable relief in the portion where it comes down. If you need some zip ties, you can get some here at e-trailer. They don't come included in your kit. And with the rest of our wires, we just zip tied those up to factory wiring up here. So now that we've got it installed, we need to test it out to make sure it's working properly. I've gone ahead and started the truck because the computer system on your Fords need to see, uh, they need to see something is plugged into the trailer before it activates all the circuits. And I did actually have to even press the brakes on it to bring it all alive here. 
So after pressing the brakes and starting the vehicle, we can see we've got our auxiliary circuit is working properly up there and our clearance lights are working, our running lights because the, the truck's running. We're gonna go ahead and operate the turn signals and make sure that those work. Both of those are working. So we're gonna flip over our meter here from trailer brakes over, or from the uh, auxiliary circuit over to trailer brakes. And now when I press the brakes, we should see our brake output as well as our brake lights. And when we pull it in reverse also, we can see that our backup lights work. So with all of our circuits working properly, at this point, we know that this installation's good. It's not a bad idea to just run this test one more time at your factory connector to make sure that there was no weird issues with the connection of plugging that back in. And if everything works good there, then you're good to go. And that completes our installation of Bargman's InBed 7-Way Trailer Connector on our 2020 Ford F-250 Super Duty.